Hi guys, it's finally done. Let me give you a tour. That's power of course, channel up and down, volume up and down, and this controls his cable box. There's like a menu system so you can go up and down left and right on the menu and select the menu item. And there is the uh, IR transmitter that actually transmits to the TV and the cable box. On this side is an FTDI jack that hopefully <laughs> I won't have ever to use. But if I ever need to reprogram this, I could guide my sister to help my dad plug this into his computer and I could use Steam Viewer or something to remotely control his computer and run Arduino IDE and reprogram this thing. Hopefully it won't come to that. <laughs> On the other side, it's a switch to select whether we are actually using the remote or programming it. An LED light for feedback, infrared receiver, uh, I'll show you that in a second to program this using the original remote as a beeper for extra user feedback and that's a header pin that my dad could take out if he finds the beeper too annoying so somebody asked me how did you program this to emulate the two remotes that you don't have because they're still at my dad's house in Indonesia so let me show you sorry for the poor video but I need this phone that I normally use to record to actually emulate my dad's remote so when I visited my dad, I downloaded this app called Zap IR that emulates TV remotes and I confirmed that I could actually emulate his cable box remote which is Samsung and his TV which is a Toshiba. With this, then now I have basically a duplicate copy of his TV and cable box remote that I could use to program this one. Let me show you how I did that. So first, you need to actually switch the mode here from use to actually programming. And then now it's ready to be programmed. So you press the button that you want to program. For instance, this is for power. I'm going to press it. And it goes into this mode where it blinks and beep, saying that I am waiting for you to tell me what that button means. So that button means this IO, the on off. So I'm going to press that. And there it is. So now this button emulates that button over there. So that controls the power on his TV. But for the channel, I want that to be controlled by the cable box rather than changing the channel on a TV we want to change the channel on his cable box so we'll switch this to the cable box and I press the channel up button and I press the channel up button on the cable box and now basically this controls the TV power and that controls the channel up and down on the cable box and you do this for all the buttons and we're done so I learned a lot doing this project. There are a lot of things in this project that I've never done before. So let me show you some of my notes from when I was working on this. I learned about direct port manipulation. So instead of using digital write, uh, we use the actual ports that is on the 80 mega chip itself. This is a pretty awesome chart. It's uh, from a website called pighicks.com. So whoever you are, thank you very much for creating this. They are very helpful to map out. Basically, these are the Arduino pins, D0 through D13, whatever. And then these are the analog pins. When you're trying to work on the actual direct port manipulation, you don't use these anymore. You use these PD and PC. And this diagram really helps. And what I did is I actually also map out not just that but also the interrupt pins and kind of map out in here so I could kind of like see the bits this was very helpful to figure out what bits to send to the different ports and this is actually the whole circuit for this right here <laughs> that complicated thing there is actually this circuit right here there's the 80 mega the Arduino basically there's a resonator uh, instead of crystal and then that's just a capacitor and this is the IR receiver that's the IR transmitter and a whole bunch of switches those are the push buttons they're all just connected to the IO pins and here's a FTDI which is actually is unplugged that you could plug right here that's the diagram oh and this is a lot of stress right here this is me trying to figure out how to wire it using the Vero board here a ferro board, for those of you unfamiliar, is basically just all connected, all in one door like that. I use a drill to drill a hole to break those connections so that you can have multiple areas on the PCB. 
and I was trying to be efficient to avoid jumpers but in the end it really did not matter because you could hardly see those jumpers up there another thing I learned is how to use the laser cutter as you can see this whole box is made out of acrylic and it's uh, laser cut so it's not 3d printed and all these holes and all that corner and all these little tiny holes are all cut using a laser thanks to makeshift uh, one of our local maker spaces in Lincoln and they taught me how to use the laser cutter and here are my first uh, drafts here so the first thing I, I did is I since I already made the circuit board I have to wrap a case around it so one of the first thing I need to do is to actually make all those holes match perfectly and as you can see this one does not yet match perfectly but once I got those matched out perfectly then I tried it on cardboard to make sure it actually works and then uh, figure out all those holes and stuff and then I got it all done let me show you some of my remnants here these are my previous versions and uh, what I what I plan on doing before originally was I was just going to glue these pieces together and then after discussing it with my friend Tony and we basically decided that it's not going to be strong enough and so my next thing is actually make little tabs there to prevent it from uh, rolling out so let me see if I could find a piece so these tabs goes into those holes and they fit perfectly and this actually won't move anymore you can't move it forward backward left and right the only way it moves it up and down like that but the whole thing is sandwiched with these screws here so there's no place for it to go anywhere but to get here there's a lot of experimentation these holes here are very hard to measure accurately because I already have them soldered now I have to wrap a box around it and so I use a lot of uh, trial and error using paper on the laser cutter because basically they're cheap and fast sometimes I even use recycled paper it's a box for uh, Dr. Pepper and chicken and biscuit I should get a sponsorship from these people <laughs> But anyway, these are all my trials and they're not quite exactly the same. Let's see if I can show you that they're just slightly, ever so slightly different. So I moved them around, you know, moved the, moved that hole a little bit to the left, moved it a little bit to the right, up and down. And eventually it fits pretty good. So that's it. I'm going to send this to my dad on Monday and I'll see you guys on the next project. Thanks for watching guys. Bye bye.